Hello guys, this is Lothos. Today I'm going to talk about dropping and about the dropping compounds. In previous video, I made this very convenient small portable strop, and today I'm going to talk about these dropping compounds. Uh, I've been using all of the dropping compounds that are available um, to, to consumers, uh, not the industrial ones, they are really difficult to get. And some of the diamond compounds I do have, but I don't um, have a good result with it. So, and uh, some of them are very special and very tricky to get. And uh, there are some countries that have a lot of regulations behind this um, diamond compounds importation. So I'm going to stick to the compounds that are available to Amazon or consumer market. Yeah, and I'm going to talk about the science and what the ingredients are and, and what the results are and how they differentiate each other. So I've been using all these compounds uh, for a long time and all of these what you see here is all good compounds. Um, I can recommend these two, uh, Dialux, it's very, very easy to get and it's, it can get really really sharp edge. Um, I'll put the link in the description where you can get this on Amazon link and if you purchase through the link it will be definitely helpful for me. Yeah, so if I start with um, starting from the left to the right, um, these are the polishing pastes. Um, these are called autosol. Uh, I know a lot of woodworkers out there, they use these autosol um, polishing pastes to, um, to strop their chisels and knives. So these are comes in tubes. Um, they have different varieties. Over here in Germany, you can get uh, for stainless, aluminum, or, or any other general um, comp uh, polishing paste. Um, this is for stainless. I chose stainless because stainless is very hard. Uh, you need to have very good abrasing power to polish stainless. So uh, if you have stainless, uh, it will cut even the hardest material. If you have a um, really hard alloys like S30V or S35VN or even S90V or such um, really good stainless such as CPM154 um, or Alta VL34. Autosolve works just fine. It is not as fine as other compounds behind, but this works really well uh, if you are just um, you want to get a easy sharp edge in uh, if you want to go for uh, just a finer edge than your stones. Um, I do believe if you are in um, in US or other country, there aren't many varieties for autosol. You only have the general autosol, which is comes with a brownish package and brownish tube. And I, I think um, I haven't tried it, so I cannot say it for sure. I think, but those also works as fine if you are just looking for any alternatives. If you, it's uh, difficult to get one of these uh, in your country, so get also if you cannot get any of these compounds behind. Okay. Uh, this is a semi-chrome. Uh, it's a similar to also. But it's still uh, it's a um, it's a German product. But funny thing is, it's difficult to get semichrome over here in Germany. Um, they make this um, compound over here in um, Wuppertal, I think. Uh, it's not far from here in Dortmund. Uh, but semichrome polish also works fine. Uh, if you uh, go to auto body store shop or if you go to hardware store, um, try to go for um, car polishing section. You might have one of these also as well. Uh, you might have a semi chrome. Uh, you can also get this uh, on Amazon as well. Uh, it's not a hundred percent stropping compound, so it's it's not such a um, such a really wonderful product. But it looks it works okay. Um, semi chrome also works okay. It's again alternative if you cannot get access to any of these um, um, compounds behind it, behind us. It's definitely worth to try if you are just looking for. Um, easy to apply um, compound. Yeah. So um, these two, like I said, I recommend these two. Uh, these are Dialux. This is uh, black and this is a green. Um, it's a really easy to get and it's really cheap price. I highly recommend these. Uh, it's easy to apply as well. I'm going to apply the dropping compound at the end of the video, and uh, this this works really fine. Uh, black and green. Uh, it's a difficult to say. I'm going to talk about more in the later, but I don't want to say which is finer than the other one. Uh, it still reacts differently to each compound. So one might say black is coarse and green is fine. That's a typical norm of the of the knife community. But then uh, some steels get finer 
with the black compound and some still gets final with the green compound so I cannot say which is which uh, I, I tell you to get both of the compounds so you can try uh, what you have um, with your steel but if you're looking for just getting one compound get the black one this thing cuts way better than the, blue, uh, the green one so this um, dialogues I lost the package but dialogues um, black compounds cut steel really well it gets really fine polished edge it gets really scary sharp yeah so the this one is I'm sure these are not so familiar with you guys uh, back in US but you can get this in US also um, these are called, if you are really knife knife guy, you might know these. These are called Picasso. Okay, this is made in Japan polishing compounds for platinum. It's a Picasso, um, it's called um, blue um, compound. It has a very unique color, it almost looks like violet. But uh, these are good for uh, actually polishing platinum. Uh, it's designed for polishing platinum. And some guys call it this is a smurf poo, <laughs> just a nickname for it so because it's blue. Uh, people call it smurf poo. But uh, this thing, uh, it's a funny thing. I, I heard it very, I heard it's a very good uh, compound and I heard uh, many people have good feedback. But uh, it's, I think it's just a myth that people um, have it around the compounds that if you, there are certain compounds that are just marvelous to, to use. But um, these are just for really, really ultra, ultra fine um, polishing, like the last finishing compounds, because uh, it's so fine that if you are um, doing stropping right after stone sharpening, uh, using this compound will not do any much difference. Uh, this thing only gets really uh, effective when it comes to final polish. I'll talk about it in the later. So don't, don't worry. So this is the famous Bark River White compound. Um, this is sold by DLT Trading. There are a lot of people. Uh, I think Knife Ship Free also sells them. Uh, it's uh, yeah. So stropping, like I said in the earlier video, you don't cut into direction. You you pull it uh, the the opposite side of the cutting direction. Yeah, this is important. And uh, yeah, the Bark River compounds they have a very good reputation among the push crafters or knife community, especially the white compounds cuts the steel really well. Uh, this is also fine compound. So if you're using this compound right after stone polishing around 6,000 or 8,000 uh, You will not get so much of a big difference. Yeah, this is also comes to fine uh, compounds this smurf blue, this blue Picasso Compound is finer than bark rebel. So that means you know this this compound really comes at the last Okay uh, Not everybody knows about this uh, but this is um, this is really big, big. It, it comes in really a big tube. Uh, I don't have it with me. It's just a small chunk. Uh, this is um, five 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 polish polish array black compound. It's really nice compound. It cuts steel quite well. This thing really has a small similar effect to Dialux black compounds. Uh, again, it depends on steel. But this thing cuts as well as the Alux black compounds. So, uh, but this thing is more expensive than this one, and also it's much bigger. So, if you are a knife maker, I recommend to use um, by five five um, black or polish. But uh, the Alux works as fine as this one. So, uh, it's I don't know. If you want to try different ones, you can also try these. But this one is really beats almost everyone. Okay, so. Kikai, yeah, I think this one you may heard about it or you might uh, know already. Uh, this is from Japan. Um, these are, I think these are from France. Um, they are, these are from French company, I think. Uh, it doesn't say, but I, I think I know it as uh, these, uh, these are from French company. Um, Dialogs are French compounds. These two are German products. These two are German products. These I cannot say for sure about people white compounds. I believe it is a um, USA made product. I think because I could not find uh, any data sheet about these um, Buck River uh, white compounds. I cannot say, but I think they are US made products. Uh, this one also as well. Um, 5 of 5 um, black polish compound. This is also a US made product. This is Japanese and this is Japanese as well. 
the pikai. Okay, so there are two types of pikai in the world. No, actually, there are many <laughs> different products. There, even there is one called Neo Pika, which is, has a less odor, but it is the original regular one. And the they comes with this Pika specific Pika comes with uh, two types. Uh, this is liquid type, and there's one with um, the solid type. Uh, I've known this brand since I was in South Korea. South Koreans use Pika a lot for their stropping. Uh, South Koreans never use this kind of. Um, this background compounds in South Korea, they, they almost everyone uses pikal. And in Japan also, they use pikal a lot. Um, in Japan, uh, there are not such as a known brands, um, uh, uh, green compounds. Of course, there are many good products in from Japan, but um, Japanese people don't really, um, crafters don't really go out there for um, choosing which brand and this brand and this brand. And of course, there are some maniatic. Um, there is a like shopping guru. They they choose specific compounds, but I'm talking about average crafters. They they don't really go out there for trying such um, strapping compounds. But uh, there are a lot of Japanese compounds coming out of there. So pikal, yeah. I'm I'm keep digressing. Sorry. So pikal is a wonderful product. This thing is comes in liquid. So uh, I'm not sure if I can show you. So yeah, it comes as a liquid, as, as this white liquid. Uh, it's um, aluminum oxide powder, really fine powder, trapped into solution of kerosene and stuff. This thing smells quite a lot, but it goes away after you apply them. And this thing is highly recommended by um, ZDP 189 steel. Uh, I do have a ZDP 189 steel knives and those are really, really high hardness steels. It's over 68 uh, HRC. So uh, if you have a really hard hardness, uh, hard edge, like any half 40 or I don't know if you have a Maximet really hard, hard, hard um, hardness or any other steel that if you have a really hard, hard hardness over 65 HRC, this thing comes really, um, it comes into play. And uh, this is also really high polish. Um, you, need, you might need to try Dialux first and then heat it up with the Pico at the last. Or Picasso compound also as well. Yeah, so uh, these three is for high, high final polish. And these are for medium to like the basic, basic um, stropping. So, uh, what I mean is that I'm going to, I made a drawing for you guys that I want to talk about this, how the stropping works. So, yeah, this is what the stropping is. So if your knife is dull, like the edges need to, if there's a knife, like try, I, mean, I drew a knife, drew a, a drawing that you're, you're looking at the edge like this. Okay, so you're looking at the cutting edge like, like this, okay. So if you look at the edge, when you 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 will have very fine flat line. If you have done any sharpening, or if you see the knife directly with your eyes, you will have this flat flat um, area. Put in a sunlight or put in your light, and you will see the flat line, and that is the dual edge. It doesn't cut at all. Okay, so you need to sharpen it to to sharp state that it actually cuts something. Okay, not so well, but it actually cuts something. So you need to sharpen it with the basic sharpening stone, 300 to 1000 grit stones. So you will have a nice 2D edge in a micro microscopic level. If you see your edge with a microscope, you will have this kind of very tooth edge at the, at the, at the line of your edge. I know it's very fine with your eye, but I'm sure this, this cutter knife is also looks like this. So it has a very toothy edge. It's very, in a microscopic level, later on in, in my channel I'll try to show you with your, with my uh, microscope if I, if I can. Um, it's a really toothy edge, yeah, because of this 300 to, um, oh sorry there's a mistake, this is 1000. Okay, so uh, to 300 to 1000 grit you have the toothy edge and that will cut leather, no problem, but it's not so sharp, yeah. You will not get that slicey uh, feeling of when you cut leather or you cut your object 
uh, you will not have any that slicey uh, feeling if you with sharpening with the 300 to 1000 grit uh, stones okay so you move on to the finishing stones which is 3000 to 6000 or even 8000 which is not so necessary i, I think 6000 grit stone for leather knives is good enough for any steels and it cuts well now at this stage it cuts well it's very sharp you feel it it's slicey you feel very sharp yeah and if you want to go above beyond that to have a very good pleasure of cutting you need to go for um, stropping yeah so stropping after stropping it cuts well yeah and it's plus so it cuts really really well and it's pairing sharp it's extremely sharp so what I mean is that you can you can stop here you know you can stop um, at the cutting well stage but if you experience this cutting well plus experience with dropping you cannot really go below this um, cutting well uh, cutting well stage of the uh, edge because it's so much fun to cut yeah so if you take a look at this um, drawing carefully even though it's on camera you cannot see it well there is a the tooth is really big on this cut states okay but if it cuts well the, the teeth is gets really small because of this um, 3000 grit uh, stones yeah so the higher grits your teeth of the edge the very at the edge of course it's a microscopic level it's not you cannot see this in with your eyes yeah with your higher grit uh, stones your edge your teeth will get very very fine it's very it gets smaller and smaller as you go towards to the final edge that's the science behind the, the cutting edge so that's why you need to progress from coarse very low number grit stones to the high number grit stones okay so if you go dropping your teeth get even smaller in microscopic level but still it's there but it gets really small that it, it looks like really fine flat line now yeah? then in real life with your bare eye it looks very sharp okay so pairing sharp and one thing that you noticed, if you have noticed, is dropping. There's, there's a, the arrow is bi bi-directional. So, stones is only this way, but dropping is going bi-directional. So, what I mean is that when you use your knife, and when your edge is cut well plus state, and if your gets, knife gets dull, it will go into the cut well st uh, stage. Then you can bring the sharpness back to the dropping, the cut well plus state and it gets dull, it gets to the cut well state. Yeah, so these states can be uh, overcome with the dropping. So it, it's extremely sharp, sharp, dropping, use, dropping. So this can be play around here, okay? But if your knife goes back to the not so sharp states, yeah, if, if your knife is not so sharp, you need to go up here with stones. You cannot just jump this state into here with stropping. You cannot do this. You cannot. So stropping doesn't. It's not a. It's not a legendary um, magical method that you can make your edge into uh, amazing sharpness or pairing sharp or extremely sharp. You need to hit this. It's very important step. You need to do this in order to you move on to stropping and then you get extremely sharp so this is very important nobody really knows about um, cares about this but it's really important to really uh, go with a higher grit uh, sharpening stone and then you move on with the stropping this is this is what the uh, logic is behind the stropping yeah so i'm going to talk about what the stropping compound is made of and how you use them so this is aluminum wing nut. It's uh, made of aluminum and this has knob. So when you can turn your nuts, it's easier without tools. And on your right, it's the same one, but it's heavily oxidized. So you see this white stuff? Yeah, this is oxidation layer. Uh, this wing nut has been in the oven for about 800 Celsius for about five minutes. And then it, this came out and this white stuff is all oxidation layer of this aluminum wing nut. So, um, this white stuff, like, if you scrape off, you will scrape off. So the aluminum wing nut, the oxidation layer, is this white stuff. Okay, it's not even, even stuff. 
you can square it off with your with your oil and this is aluminium and this white stuff is aluminium oxide yeah? this this aluminium oxide has a different characteristic than pure aluminium alloy yeah? so the aluminium oxide what you what you just have sawn has very hard hardness and it becomes very abrasive if you polish it against this any any metals so aluminium is quite soft metal uh, if you know any framework or if you've seen any um, aluminium pan it's very light it's it's a really bendable it's not a really heavy heavy uh, metal but when it comes oxidized it becomes very different characteristic so your strapping compound is made of aluminum oxide like what you see here okay so uh, not not every uh, uh, strapping compound is made of uh, aluminum oxide some of them are chromium oxide so you oxide chromium then it's a chromium oxide. It's the same as uh, same process, similar process to aluminum oxide. Um, there are different kinds of aluminum oxides and chromium oxides, and these specific uh, oxides are cheap. It's a more economical way to produce, and they, are, they have a right characteristic to use as an abrasive. So these are used as a strapping compound. But this one is very interesting. So Picasso, this the the official name for this one is Picasso. Platinum blue buffing compound. Okay, so it's made made for uh, buffing platinum to high polish platinum metal. And look at this chart that what they have used into this compound. So it's oxidized aluminum. It's the the aluminum oxide they used, and they used silicon carbide and also ceramic powder in this in this uh, compound. So. So this is very unique. Um, I've never seen any compound that used a ceramic powder and also silicon carbide powder mixed with this um, compound. And I think that that could be the reason that this thing really cuts hard steel really well. Uh, it is it cuts steel very hard steel quite well. But like I said, it's it's really the final polishing. It's a really final stage for your strapping. So if you're looking for really unique like extremely sharp edge for your hard steel alloys then this is the one man. this is the one that you should get for it's a very unique material to be used in this um, polishing compounds and you can really make bring your edge to extremely fine sharpness okay and also this pickle does it so well too so uh, these two japanese products even though this don't, one doesn't have any um, silicon carbide or ceramic powder this thing and this thing brings your edge to extremely sharpness at the final stage of stropping. Okay, so if I line up such a compounds, how I how I'll use them, just in case you already have them, or if you're trying to buy everything that what you saw here, how I how I would use it is to just has to use it as the alus and then buff ribbon or the alux and this picasso or the alux and then pico okay and if you don't have such a setup i would use auto saw and then the alux okay and if you don't have this auto saw, if you have a semicron, I will use semicron and the alux. Okay, and uh, yeah, that would be the setup that I would use if I use two. And if I only have, I want to use only one strop compounds that does quite well on all of the steel out there for leather knives or even pocket knives, the alux black is fine one, it's good one. Yeah, I highly recommend this one. Okay. So, before I end this video, I want to also express one more really important tip for you that there are a lot of videos out there on YouTube that they really promote the guys to oil their strop, to apply stropping easy but this Dialux compounds doesn't need any oiling and even if it does, do not apply any oil under what circumstances, okay? What no matter we're using Dialux Green or using Picasso or Bach Riva or this um, Brownells 555 Black Polish, never apply any oil. 
no vaseline, no, no also, I mean, no um, ballast oil, no mineral oil. Just don't apply any oil. If you apply oil, you will diminish the effect, okay? And second tip, I see a lot of guys just trying to crayon the strap with the strapping compounds. Yeah, so they just want to make this whole area as into a compound color. So they want to just cake up the, the strap with the strapping compound. Never do that. Yeah, it actually diminishes the the effect of the strapping compound. That's not how it works. Okay, so what you want to see, what you want to do is, you want to see the leather slightly. Yeah, so here's how I how, how I recommend it. The Dialux black compounds is really easy to apply. Okay. So what you do is just That's it. Like, I know that a lot of guys will say, oh no, you didn't apply enough and blah blah blah. No, actually, just having the rest of the leather exposed onto a strop like this, it's much better than you kick up the whole area with a stropping compound. Believe me. This, this gets you even sharper edge. So, just leave it there like this. Just uh, maybe there's a chunk over here, just remove that with your fingernail. And just exposing your strap like this is just much better, yeah? And the other side just clean, yeah? And then you do it here, stropping, and then you finish off here, like final polishing, because the, the minimum amount of polishing that's left on your knife edge will get polished up with the, this um, bare strop, yeah? So we'll get the, the final polishing. So don't really like load up your strap extremely with the strapping compound. That is a tip, and never oil it. Yeah, if you oil it, your knife get edge will not really interact with the compound, so it will not produce such a good good sharp edge. You need some aggressiveness to your edge, but you don't want too much of compounds that is difficult to work with your steel. Yeah, you need some kind of black, I mean the the leather that can really help um, blend in the whole compound with your steel. Yeah, so if you have only have tried the um, like like color the strap with the strapping compound you might want to uh, try like this way with your new strap yeah so that's it i hope you guys like this video and um, if you like this video please give me a thumbs up and if you haven't subscribed to my channel please subscribe and i will see you guys next video bye bye